Thanks, Dennis, and thank you all for uh, letting me be here with you today. I'm really excited. Uh, I think everything that Dennis said is absolutely right. As you all know, I believe that universities are the best place for innovation and entrepreneurship to begin. And I'm going to explain that a few reasons uh, before we get to uh, the other parts of the program. But really, there's no nothing else that we need to look at other than this event happening right here. Um, and congratulations to Rachel and Mackenzie and Hudson and Ian and everybody that has uh, worked on this. When Buck Goldstein and Judith Cohen and I and a few other people were dreaming up what this whole entrepreneurship thing at Carolina was going to be, there were some parts that we guessed we could do, but the parts that have been driven by the students have been far, far better than we could have imagined. And that's the way it's supposed to be at a university. That's why it's exciting to work here, and today's event is uh, as good an example of that as um, as we can hope to see. And that's why I'm optimistic, despite the words that are on this slide. Um, we can all come up with words that we would put on this slide that we're all here organized to try to do something about. Uh, these are hugely challenging problems, but the optimism and energy that you're bringing to the university and the uh, uh, advantages that we have built in here uh, for you over the last 200 years uh, are going to make it possible for us to make some progress on some of these. And you saw uh, Mike Cohen's picture, um, and he has made dramatic progress against the worldwide problem of HIV and AIDS. And um, for those of us who were uh, a little bit older than the college students who are here, when HIV first uh, became a massive problem, it's, um, none of us thought that we would be where we are uh, when we're uh, by now. And so uh, uh, that's inspiration for us to keep going. The thing that these problems have in common is that they can't be solved by one discipline. There are a lot of people like me who went to graduate school and learned to write down formulas that describe everything that they wanted to work on. But these kinds of problems up here can't be solved that way. Uh, we need humanists and design people and social scientists and uh, data folks um, and people who aren't just reductionist thinkers to solve a lot of these problems because they're not really technical. And a university is the place where um, that comes together. And when I talk about universities, uh, it's, it's obvious from this event. Uh, we just really need to do two things really well. The first is attract extremely talented people to come to our campus. And you're all here, and you're all extremely talented, obviously, by being here and our faculty. We need to get the best, most energetic, most diverse, most motivated people to the campus. And we need to create an environment where things like this conference can happen. If we do those two things, then all the people that we attract are going to be able to do far more than we could ever imagine in the abstract. Um, to address these great problems. And I'll just leave you with two things to think about, because you're going to hear mostly about social entrepreneurship things today. So I'm going to talk about two sort of technical things. The first is cancer genetics. Uh, again, you know, th this depends on your perspective. A lot of us feel that the human genome was sequenced in its entirety a fairly short time ago, 12 years ago. Is that better? 12 years ago. But if you're an incoming college student, that's when you were six years old. So it just depends on your perspective whether we just sequenced the human genome a little while ago or it's something that happened in the uh, ancient past. And what's exciting is the first time we sequenced the human genome, it cost billions of dollars to do it. And we all sat around and waited for the day that it was there. And now we sequence the thousands of genomes every day, and pretty soon it's only going to cost $1,000 sequence the human genome. So we're going to be able to take the human genome and the things that happen to people in their lives, their medical outcomes, their psychological outcomes, their families, and correlate those. And that's a really exciting thing for the future, not just for science, but for the things that people are going to be talking about today. And, the, and the, that brings me to my second point, which is you're going to be hearing a lot about big data. Um, the, the data that you generate when you're messing around with your phone, the records that you uh, generate when you go to the doctor or you buy something, uh, all, of the, all of that data is out there in the cloud somewhere. 
And we need people to analyze that. And Carolina is in a very, very strong position in this because we have uh, the number one school of information in library science. We have great social scientists who are good at processing gigantic data sets. And um, we have people who are motivated to use those things globally to address huge problems. So cancer genetics and big data, those are two things that I want you to think about. And my, uh, uh, my sign is up here. So I'll just go back to this horrifying but inspiring slide. We've got big problems in the world, but you all are in the right place doing the right things to uh, get excited and get the skills to go out and address them. Thank you all for what you're doing today. You're making the environment that we need here at Carolina to address these big problems work. Thank you all.